Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm here at America's Test Kitchen with Christopher Kimball, and you're gonna tell me about America's Test Kitchen, which I already know about for those guys. Uh, we've been around for 35 years. I started Cook's Magazine in 1980. We've been here since 1993. We have 50 test cooks in there, not all at the same time. We have about 2,500, 3,000 square foot of kitchen. We have 30 ovens. We have a bunch of stove tops. And we spend all day, every day, starting with really bad food. And then we turn it into hopefully really good food. And we eat everything we make. And we're constantly testing. We make a recipe 40, 50 times before it's done. It might take five or six weeks. Can we take a look around? That's the gig, yeah. Awesome. So. This is our uh, small kitchen. Mm -hmm. We have 10 ovens. When we film our TV show in May, we use this uh, to prep for that show. This is the cooking magic room. This is where all the stuff that gets made off camera and yeah. then brought in. And then we also use this for photography to do uh, shoots every day as well. And the rest of the time is just extra space for us in the kitchen. We'll go this way. This looks like an important room. The most important room. This is where everything gets cleaned up. We also have takeout fridges which means uh, when the cooks find something they really like, they immediately put it in a takeout container with their name on it. Okay. So they don't have to cook dinner. Nobody here ever cooks dinner <laughs> during the week because they cook all, all so, the time. So the dishwashers, it's important to note, are probably one of the only things that's not uh, like what you would find in a home kitchen here, right? Yeah, that's professional. And this is just the pantry dry storage. Nothing unusual about that, except there's a lot of stuff there. A, that's a giant tub of sugar. This is, uh, yeah, this is the heart of the operation. As I said, we have 50 full-time test cooks, and we have 20 or 25 people in here at a time, uh, running from about 7 in the morning till about 4, 4.30 in the evening. And uh, we also film our TV show right here in May. We, we record our weekly radio show here uh, once or twice a week as well, mm -hmm. actually in the kitchen. And uh, we have three staffs. We have the Cook's Illustrated Magazine, Chris Country Magazine, and our book development staff. And it looks like everything is set up to have massively parallel testing at any given time. You have, I, I've seen at least a couple of dozen ovens, it seems like, dozens of ranges. It looks like a professional kitchen, but we're testing on stuff you could buy for your own home kitchen. Then we also have some lower quality <laughs> equipment in stoves, like a really bad electric stovetop. Okay. So we try to blow up a recipe once we make it. So if you don't do it right, use the wrong skillet, the wrong stovetop the wrong ingredient, it's not gonna work. So we try to figure out how it's not gonna work and why. So we write up a recipe, say, you know, don't do this. The idea is to make it bulletproof so that anybody at home can get at least good results out of what, out of what Yeah, your everyone is. thinks the secret about recipe testing is we can make it here, that's not it. It's like, you know, your kids grow up, go to college, and then they fail or not, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. a recipe. So it's what you're gonna do at home. You're gonna substitute ingredients, you're not gonna read the recipe, you're gonna skip steps, you're not gonna have the right cut of meat, uh, you'll have you'll have the eight-inch spring form instead of the nine-inch spring form. Uh -huh. You have a ten-inch skillet instead of an eight-inch skillet. So it's getting it to work in your kitchen. So when we send a recipe out after we're done, we send it out to thousands of people, get the feedback, and then we constantly adjust the recipe. Keep refining. Um, what's next, I guess? Uh, well, we have uh, we can show you some of the editorial areas where okay. we sit around tables and taste food and argue about stuff. Okay, it's about arguing. I, I mean, making magazines is always about arguing, in my experience. Yes, but um, especially when the recipes involved. The better the argument, yeah. the better the magazine, though, is the way. And the more works. stubborn the editors, the better it is. We have <laughs> yeah. a lot of stubborn editors, right? Definitely. Yes. They must have a great magazine. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys must use a ton of food all the time. Uh, we spent $485,000 on food last year. Wow. Actually. Wow. And so this is uh, our library where we will uh, do our tastings two or three times a week uh, and put those in the magazine on the TV show. And then as I said, this is also our cookbook library. We stage a lot of stuff here as well. When we're doing television, we stage a lot of the things we need. Uh, ingredients come in, they're staged here like they're doing this morning. So a lot, a lot of stuff is coming in Monday morning. Uh, we have full-time shoppers to do the shopping every day. And do they shop at? I mean, do you go to restaurant supply places or do stop you... and shop? Okay, normal. Well, grocery we have normal, store. normal grocery stores. Uh, we don't go to fancy stores at all because uh, we have to use the same ingredients our, our readers and viewers are going to use. And, and how do you deal with things that that may be local ingredients? Like flank steak is much harder to get in some parts of the country than others. And we have like thousands that. of people on our email file, and we do ingredient checks. So we'll say, can you get flank steak? Can you get this? Is it called shell steak? Is it called tri-tip? Okay. And we'll find out around the country if they can get it. 
so uh, we'll always have a substitute if it's called something else. There are 279 designations for meat cuts in the butcher's handbook, so not all of those are available. Uh, it's like a Delmonico steak is kind of a New York thing, but mm -hmm. you never see that in California. So w we make sure people can get everything. And you publish everything yourself, so it's not yeah. it's not like stuff's going off to some publisher someplace. You do the, the magazines, the TV show, and do everything from writing editorial to, to pre-press here. Everything's done here. Uh, I remember we did a book uh, many years ago with a publisher of record, mm -hmm. and I think they sold 10,000 copies. And so I went to see them and said, you know, I could sell 10,000 copies with the sandwich board standing on Madison Avenue, actually. <laughs> so we decided to do it ourselves. In our first book, uh, 1999, the best recipe sold, a million three now. We sold a lot of copies. I have a copy of that in mind. Yeah. Everybody has a copy and of that. So, uh, I mean, we're still good friends with that guy, actually a nice guy, and they, and they, were, they were good. But um, we decided to figure out the book business on our own. It took time. Um, so, yeah, we, we like to do, I, I think the secret is if you do things yourself, you take responsibility for it. And when you do a bad job, you know it. And you can't blame somebody else. So you gotta sit down and, and, and rework it. And that's why we do, we produce all our TV shows, we produce our own radio show. Uh, and we always do a bad job at first, you know, and then we get a little bit better and we keep working on it. And I think that's, that's why we like to, to own what we do. It's funny because it seems like it's the same approach you take yeah. to recipes, right? Well, our radio show in the first year wasn't a great radio show, believe me, because radio and television are, have nothing in common. And so, you know, it takes time. And month after month, you get a little bit better. But, but if you do it yourself, then, then you're constantly thinking about how to do it better. And that's it's just like our recipe testing. That's, that's what we like to do. Very cool. Upstairs to see editorial lady? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Let's go up. This is a lovely green on the spiral staircase. Yes, I'm sure we spent months picking it, yeah. Because <laughs> that's the kind of people we are. It wasn't in the building when you got here? This is all uh, Cook's Illustrated. You can tell we spent a lot of money on uh, offices and decorating. Uh, this is the editorial table for the two magazines. W where do you guys get these huge tables? I haven't seen a table this big in this, years. Um, I went to a boarding school for high school, and this is actually called a Harkness table. It's used at, at two schools in New England, more than two. And in classes, you'd sit around the table with a teacher, uh, and you were expected to, to sit there and you know, say something intelligent. And if you didn't, the teacher would, and everyone else in the class would rip you to pieces. Okay. Which is exactly the model for editorial. It's perfect for editorial, yeah. So you sit around, and if you're developing a recipe, you have to defend it. And um, if you don't know what you're doing, you won't last very long. One of the things my early editors said is that the better the arguments, the yeah. better the publication, so. We've gotten, um, in the early years, uh, people would cry, leave, uh, just leave the table. <laughs> it was kind of brutal. N now we're better at it, and the people we've hired are, are tough and smart. And, you know, if you ask them a question, they've tested it. And they'll go, well, I, I didn't do that because we were just having an argument about baked Alaska we were working on. <laughs> you know, why do it that way? Does it really make sense? And she's talking about the insulation properties of foam, that kind of thing. So that's what we do. We sit around and argue about stuff. So we have in that space a lot of the IT folks, new media, art here, some social media as well. But we decided to do an online cooking school. That business is becoming a very big business, adult education. So we had to find a way to engage people and teach them how to cook. And we have Bridget, who's on our TV show, actually does the instruction, but it has a lot of other things with it, which is you know, tests and quizzes and shopping and equipment and other things. Don't do this, do that. Uh, we have 6,000 students as part of that right now, which has done very well. Um, but you know, it's a very different thing than learning in person, a very different thing than doing a TV show or a magazine. You have to rethink how people interact with it. Uh, you can have 24-hour um, guidance from Bridget or some of our other instructors if you want. Uh, we're at a lower level, you just take the courses, take them anytime you want. And, and is, it, is the goal to teach people how to cook at home or to cook professionally or? No, this is cooking at home, but we're, we're trying to get the techniques sorted out. So it's not just learn a recipe. Underneath that is, you know, here's why it works, here's the concept, here's how to make a saute work, here's what a roasting is, here's what a braise is, you know, here are the knife techniques. So you're not just getting a recipe, you're sort of learning something about cooking. Um, it's, it's one of the things I love about America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Illustrated is that you have kind of like the, the high level overview on the TV show and then frequently you see the same recipes appear in the magazine or in the cookbooks later and, and you get more detail and, and the cooking school adds another. Yeah, things usually start out in the magazine, then they go to one of our two TV shows, uh, and then that is drilled down in, in, in the cooking school. Actually, the, 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 
the most recipes appear in books, actually, but the magazines themselves, that's where you spend five or six weeks developing a recipe. Uh, you know, 60 or 70 tries sometimes. So we've been over 100. Um, I think well, old-fashioned chocolate cake was 130 cakes. Wow, that is a, that is a lot of cake for folks. I never thought I'd get sick of chocolate cake, <laughs> although I, I got over it. I still like chocolate. You, you recovered eventually. Well, thank you so much for the tour. Um, Pleasure. As I've said many times before, America's Test Kitchen is my favorite cooking TV show. Uh, Cooks is, is far and away my favorite magazine. Um, and it's so good to see, get a glimpse of, of you know, how, how this hall works and how it goes together. But the only thing, there's one thing you didn't do. Oh. You didn't get something to eat. Oh. I, well, so I, we'll have to take care of that. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks. And uh, we'll have more on Tested soon. See you guys later. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like the video. Bye.